Sony has made my perfect camera, the Sony Alpha 7 R5. It seems designed exactly for my specific needs, which are broad and quite honestly completely unrealistic. I'm a hybrid wedding photographer and video creator, a commercial photographer and video creator, a YouTube photographer and video creator. I create a lot of work over a lot of genres, from Antarctica to Kenya to Japan to Iceland, and I never really found that one camera to fit all my needs. Maybe I should rephrase that. I've never found a system to meet all of those needs. More on that later. They brought all the good forward and didn't unnecessarily remove features or introduce problems to make you have to spend more money buying a more expensive camera. I want to mention that point again because I think it's very rare in this industry. They didn't bring out a hammer and do something silly just to make you have to buy an A1 or an FX3 as well as this camera. This can be the camera. Your camera. A camera that when you get it, you're not immediately realizing the limitations and wondering if you should have spent more money. Hello, Taylor. Hello, Magic. What camera do I have? The A7R Mark V. No, it's A7RV. RV? It's a very smart camera. It has artificial intelligence. Have you talked to it? I was yelling at it to go to 35 millimeters, and it didn't. And it has a lovely viewfinder and a lovely screen. The That's... screen is very nice. I like that the audio levels when you're in video are up in the top corner. It's I don't care about nice. video. I'm a photographer. This camera really is everything that I've loved in previous Sony cameras, all in one place. Also, if you're a wedding photographer, there's a free preset pack in the description below. You can get those presets, they'll change your life too. They might not change your life, but they'll make your work a little bit prettier, more consistent. They're available. But back to the camera. First, this camera is incredibly responsive. The autofocus, which was already amazing, got a big improvement with the new AI chip. I won't get too into the details, but basically this camera understands people, animals, and objects on an entirely new level. It is the new industry leader when it comes to that. It is fast. Very fast. Maybe my favorite ergonomic update of any camera brand is how you now have three physical dials that are all very easy to get to. Two on the back, one on the front. You're not struggling to move your thumb down to the wheel down here to control aperture. That said, this is a 360 dial that can be used as a D-pad, left, right, up, down. The ergonomics in general are great. Gone are the days of the clunky Sony bodies. Next, the EVF and the screen are beautiful. Incredibly nice to use. A lot of nice touches, like the audio monitors up here in the top corner. And it comes with a fully articulating screen. There's also the option to use it more like the A1 if you wish, the tilt up and down, or go all the way to the front. Menu system makes sense, and the body is incredibly customizable. I'm pretty simple with my customizations. ISO gets set to the back wheel, which in my opinion should be how it's set standard, and the C2 button up here gets set to APS-C crop mode so I can quickly bounce it into APS-C mode if needed. With the additional megapixels of this camera, even when you are in APS-C mode, you're still getting lots of resolution. This makes the camera even more versatile that when you get to the end of that zoom, you can, you can bump into APS-C or if you're shooting a prime like we often do, you now have essentially two focal lengths that you can work with. Another thing I like is the size of the body that remains small, that does not have a grip attached to it permanently, so it's easy to travel with. <laughs> Anyone there? I want this camera to focus on trains. That's what I want. You've come to the right place. I'm excited to see the tram autofocus. What else full. does it focus on? Do you remember? Insects. Insects. Human beings, full skeletal structure. Another great update is that the auto white balance is now a lot more accurate. It's always been one of my complaints and I've always shot my Sony cameras on shade white balance mode because it never selected the correct auto white balance. Now it is a lot better with the AI chip understanding more of the scene and if you're photographing people, it knows to set the white balance for the skin tone of the subject in your frame. And that is just one more small thing that you can release control over so that you don't have to worry about it, that you can create 
the images that you see in your mind without worrying too much about the technical. The Sony Alpha 7 R5 just works. With the camera, you can take as much control as you want to, but all of the automated decisions are going to be even more accurate now. This really is a camera that stays out of your way. In a metaphorical way, it's obviously still in your hands and in front of you physically, but it really does keep the technical to the camera and allow you to execute on your vision. Depending on what I'm doing with the Sony Alpha 7 R5, I change things around a little bit. The physical button layout, the ISO dial that I spoke about earlier, and the C2 button set to APS-C, those stay. However, internally I do set one thing different, and it is the medium raw functionality. So you have small raw, medium raw, and full size raw. This is a very large megapixel camera, and I don't need to shoot that specifically on a wedding day. So I'll move to lossless M, which is a 26 megapixel raw file. And I find that that is perfect for wedding photography. If I'm doing portraits that I know are going to be blown up to a large print, I am using the full size megapixels or landscape photography full size as well. For video settings, I will typically be at 4K 30p. However, during a wedding day, I might do full HD at 60p or 4K 60, depending on the event. I'm typically shooting everything handheld and with active stabilization on. So active stabilization is one above. It's the digital stabilization that goes above the regular IBIS. And I've found it to be honestly quite incredible and worth the tiny crop factor that it introduces. And digital stabilization to you might be a bad word, but I assure you if you give it a shot in this camera or any of the newer Sony Alpha cameras, that you will be impressed. There are no negatives of this camera. File sizes are a little bit large because it's a large megapixel camera. Even on lossless medium, you might need to buy some bigger cards. The shutter is quite quiet. Yeah. That's a hard it's thing nice. to say for me as Polish. Quite, quite quiet. Quite quiet? Quite quiet. Quite quiet. So to wrap this up, Sony absolutely made my perfect camera with the Sony Alpha 7 R5. I will be using this as a main camera for my wedding days, for my commercial production, for YouTube content with the fully articulating screen, as well as the two dials, as well as the upgrades and auto white balance, incredible IBIS with active stabilization, option for medium raw, as well as the big resolution for when I'm in a, a place that requires it. It really is an incredible product for me, and I suspect if you've made it this far in the video, you're also heavily considering it. And I am honestly surprised that Sony made this camera, that it's not watered down in any way, that it's not lacking key features in order to get you to buy a more expensive product that this is the camera that it's at a very attractive price point for what it is and it can absolutely be your main camera for any photo or video coverage so thanks for watching if you have any questions comments concerns put them in the comments below and don't forget to go get that free preset pack link in the description